Hello there, this is Retro Spirits Gaiden, and this is the PS1 Classic Jailbreak. So, I bought the PS1 Classic a while back. It cost me 50 English pounds. I've done a review of this, as you can see here. These are the games that are included on the Classic console itself. Now, the console is a nice looking little thing. It's got some joy pads, which are kind of cool, feel like PlayStation joy pads. Visually, in the real world, in real life, IRL, the actual console is nice looking, but the content on it has always been a bit lacking. And that was the main criticism levied at this, uh, as well as the fact that they included the PAL versions of most games. So they ran at 50 hertz and there's a horrible, horrible filter put on to the visuals, which makes the games look blurry. So you could, as an option, then jailbreak your classic console and add more games. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do that. What I am going to do is describe what it's like actually having the jailbreak applied and what it's like to actually use it once it's been jailbroken. So that was an example of Mr. Driller as it comes on the console. And we are gonna pick another another title potentially to show, let's pick Jumping Flash, I think. We'll pick Jumping Flash, go back to Jumping Flash, uh, to show what the visuals are like. Because even the polygon games in this with the blur filler added, don't look better. They look kind of worse. So I don't know what the point of the filler was because when you're jailbreak it, as you can see, you can turn those fillers off. I don't know what the actual emulator is that, ru that is running these games on the classic as it is, but basically the jailbreak puts emulation station and project Eris and that includes retro arc so we have extra and ultra jumping flash now some people like this game just as a quick aside i never played this game back in the day so i've got no love for it but having played it on the classic i don't know what the hell people saw in it it's very clunky and a bit ugly the 2d stuff is uh, pre-rendered there lovely uh you've basically got a rabbit that kind of walks around and you can shoot things and jump on platforms awkwardly. So it's a bit, uh, I suppose it's a bit like Mario 64, but it's like the interaction is very mechanical and uh, linear. Whereas Mario 64, he was like a like a rubber ball, wasn't he? he was, you're bouncing Mario around the levels like he was made of some sort of gelatin substance. But anyway, so this doesn't look too horrific apart from the obviously fizzy, horrible texturing that they included in the game, but it is a little bit blurry. Not in a nice way, just in a, a crap emulator type. Anyway, uh, if you like this game, I'm sure you'll be infuriated by how I just described it, so that's cool. Uh, but let's uh, shoot this frog. I don't know why we're killing frogs, with top hats on no less. Uh, and falling to our deaths. Anyway, that is Jumping Flash, a game that I don't really want to play. So, what I've done is I've added Project Eris to the PS1 console, and it's on here at the moment. This is the jailbroken version of the console, and you've got very few uh, options here. Uh, but it does, the Project Eris doesn't appear until you plug in a USB device into the joypad slot 2 on your console with all your extra ROMs and things on it. So next time you boot up with the USB stuck in, you get different screens. Now the process of putting Project Eris on this wasn't too hard. It doesn't look like you can really brick the device, but people are saying like, oh, this is a cool emulation uh, thing for your PS1 Classic. It makes it great. Now, I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, it makes it more complicated, that's for sure. 
and we'll get into why in a minute. So you can see that Project Eris adds a lot of different functionality to the, to the front end of PlayStation, which is cool, like you can skip the boot up sequence and things. If you care about skipping those, uh, there's Emulation Station. So you can put other emulators on here, uh, but I don't have any. Uh, actually, what I'd have preferred with this would just be the ability to add PlayStation games rather than have Emulation Station and RetroArch because I just want that hidden away. I just want to play my PlayStation games. And these, I think you can skip this on the boot up. But I'm just showing you that this is a fully featured RetroArch here. And let's hit Project Eris. Um, you see you've got Network Manager there. So if you've got a uh, network dongle, you can plug your PlayStation into the network. So this is all the PlayStation games that I own added. And you can see they're all on the carousel. And you can flick through them. It automatically comes up with uh, images for your box art. Um, in most cases, sometimes it won't be able to find them and it just gives you a generic image. But what you can do is then add your own PNGs to the device and it will use those instead. So the Ridge Racer one, I think I've got three Ridge Racer games there. None of them came up with the appropriate image for the front cover. Um, so yeah, we've got a mixture of PAL and 60 Hertz titles in my collection. So Greatest Garden and Darius are 60 Hertz. Uh, Gun is Heaven is 60 Hertz. Or Rapid Reload, as known in the UK. But this does show off the new options. So one of the benefits of adding Project Eris is you can now control the blurriness of the visuals. So if you've got a nice 2D game like Gun is Heaven, by pressing the, I believe it's Select and Triangle, you can turn the texture filtering on and off. So off uh, makes the image slightly bigger for some reason. Don't know why, but it de-blurs the graphics. You turn it on and those graphics go blurry. The irritating thing about it is um, you have to press select and triangle every time you want to go in and out of that menu. So it's not like you press X and it uh, will come out of there. And exit actually exits the whole goddamn game. So the menu will catch you out a few times if you decide to do this to your PlayStation Classic and you will quit the desktop multiple times and probably scream at the top of your voice. So here's the game itself. There's the texture filtering off. You can see it's nice and pixely. And that's the texture filtering on and you can see it's gone blurry. So I don't know why that functionality wasn't included on the PlayStation Classic out of the box. Uh, it would have been it would have been nice, wouldn't it? It would have been nice to have this game on it as well. But hey, they didn't bother. And they didn't bother of any wipeout either. So this is... What game is this? We're checking out another game. Oh, we're checking out uh, Jumping Flash. Just quickly, so you can see I've got the, um, the filter menu coming up again, probably. Let's skip past all the FMV. Let's get into the game. Now the 3D games, some of them... You don't notice the filter as much, but if you do take the opportunity to turn it off, you can see it is clearer. It's much, much clearer. So, again, don't know why they didn't include it. There you go. The weird thing about this whole shebang, apart from a frog with a top hat, because that is kind of crazy, is um, some of these games run in what I'm guessing is uh, Eris, this menu here, and then some of them run in RetroArch, and you get a different menu if the game runs in RetroArch, you get the RetroArch menu. So the the visual filter on and off is in a different position in RetroArch, it's buried in a screen sub-menu, and it's called bilinear filtering. Now what you can do with that is you can set it to off, and then save that configuration. And then it'll, it'll apply it to all of the games that run in RetroArch. It's weird. I'll be blunt, the whole thing's bloody weird. 
it's really complicated in terms of like if you don't know how to use RetroArch, uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt um, setting anything up. Uh, but actually adding the games is fairly easy. So modding the device and adding the games is the easy part. Learning how to use all these different emulators and what the buttons do is annoying. It is documented online, but it's still bloody annoying. The other main problem we've got with these games, oh, we're going to play Ridge Racer, is the PAL ones. Um, so anything that's 60 hertz tends to play okay. And um, you can see why they didn't add some games to the classic originally when it comes to the PAL releases. I can't ever do this. Uh, before game clearance. Apparently, if you clear those enemies, you get extra cars in Ridge Racer, but I've never been able to do it. Not once. Uh, everything looks, to my eyes, better with the filter off. I mean, look how clear this looks. Lovely. Let's put it back on. And to get out of this menu, it's uh, select and triangle. And unfortunately, triangle in Ridge Racer is also change view. So every time you do it, you change the view, which is freaking irritating. Um, the frame rate isn't exactly killer on this game. <laughs> when it's emulated on the classic, I feel like it's a running a bit frame skippy. Um, I don't remember it being kind of this way on the actual device or a more powerful emulator so yeah I don't think it's far off it just feels a little bit uh, a little bit jerky driving's not very good here um, the joy pads for the classic are actually very nice representations of the PlayStation ones it's just I'm not used to playing this game that digitally on an old joy pad I'm gonna turn the texture filler on again and he's going to be outside the car. Oh no, here we go, see? I've accidentally pressed the X button rather than select and triangle and it's gone back. Never mind. Okay, and we've got Star Gladiator. Yeah, lovely, lovely stuff. So yeah, I've, as you can see, I've reviewed all these games potentially before on the channel and I can now access them on my PlayStation Classic. Like I say, the 60 Hz ones tend to be nice. I'm assuming this uh, is looking okay to you. I'm assuming that uh, the YouTube compression, when I actually upload this, doesn't wreck my whole presentation where you can't see the difference between the filtered and unfiltered graphics. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, Raiden here is a classic shooting game. Well, this one's Raiden too, isn't it? Accidentally putting credits in. Is always the way. Ah, this is one of the ones with the RetroArch interface. So you have to navigate all these menus. Um, and this isn't the right one. I have to go to the the menu to the left. There's a. I press B. There we go. And then I have to go to settings. And then I think it's video. And then at the bottom of here, somewhere is bilinear filtering. Or oh, there is, I can turn that off and on there. Uh, disconcertingly, when you activate any option in this, it blanks the screen and restarts. Um, oh my word. This one means, this is not, this is not a cakewalk by any means. And uh, it's quit the desktop momentarily, making me worried. Um, but it does play this game nicely with unfiltered graphics you can use save points etc um, so we're gonna go what are we playing next are we gonna play a problem game let's play a problem game let's play R types so this is the PAL version of R types so this runs at 50 Hertz on a 50 Hertz PlayStation and what you will immediately notice upon launching is that every second or so well actually the videos are screwed as you can see there 
So the FMV intros are all got like a doubling thing going on. That's not how the video actually looks. Uh, so yeah, any 50 hertz videos are fucked. Um, could you see how jerkily that uh, logo came on there? That's what the game's like. So let's look at the game and look at the scrolling. So it's not this jerky on an actual PlayStation at 50 hertz. Yeah, it's something to do with the... I imagine, uh, technical means they're going to come out. I imagine it's something to do with the sync rate of 50 hertz versus the monitor. Um, when they're out of sync, then the visuals become jerky. Although when you do turn the filtering back on, it does mitigate that slightly. So with the filtering off, it's horrible and jerky. You turn the filtering on, you get blurrier graphics, but it's less jerky. So, yeah, if you've only got 50 hertz games, I don't know if I'd recommend even taking the time to bother putting them on a classic. I would probably put them on a Raspberry Pi. You'd get a better result. It's still sort of jerky. It's sort of mitigated it a little bit. But yeah, 50 games really don't work that well on this device. Still a classic game though. Oh, I love a bit of our type. And let's go to the next game. Let's try the PAL version of R Type Delta. So I own the PAL and Japanese versions of R Type Delta. I got the PAL one for free. Someone gave it to me for free. It was nice of them. And uh, you can see when this one boots up, uh, when you get to the save card menu, lots of horrible graphical glitching happens. There we go, we've got some weird shit in the background there. And some weird shit in the background there. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, anyway, the game kind of plays okay, but, but it's jerky. It is jerky as um, beef jerky. It's jerkier than that. It's actually much more jerky than that. Let's just pick a spaceship and get into the game. I've edited all these videos, by the way. Uh, I've edited them down so, just so we can get to the gameplay because you don't want to see intros in this. You want to know what the PlayStation Classic can do for you. And, uh, well, I didn't edit this bit out, did I? Like a fool. There's me, gloating about my editing skills. Yeah, I left this shit in. What a fool. I'll take Delta. There we go. Look how stuttery it is. It's horrible. Horrible stuttery mess. So the other problem that we have with uh, PAL games, and I've only noticed this with PAL games on the classic. Um, is that true? No, that's not true. I've noticed it on R-Type Delta on the Japanese. Look how this is horribly jerky. Um, it's buggy. Uh, the games will just quit out. So you can be enjoying yourself, uh, and it happens with R-Type Delta on level 2 more than any other level. Uh, the game will just quit and it'll say, oh, I, don't, I can't play this anymore. Oh, my brain hurts. Uh, I, c I can't. I don't know. I'm just a PlayStation Classic. What are you trying to get me to do? And then um, it'll just quit out your desktop. It's just really infuriating. So, would I suggest you buy a PlayStation Classic to mod and play all your PlayStation games? No. I think if you have one for free and you never played it and you want to add some functionality to it, maybe, but I would not, I repeat, would not buy one of these with a specific intent of using it to play your PlayStation collection. It's just not good enough. It's irritating uh, to set up in terms of like each game. Uh, the games themselves run uh, poorly, especially if you've got PAL format, and they crash regularly. So why would you then spend the money on the PlayStation Classic? Don't know. If you uh, were more enterprising than me, for instance, you could buy a PlayStation Classic and take the guts out of it and put like a Raspberry Pi in the guts of it. I guess that would work. But I can't solder. I can't sew either. And uh, I can't cook. So I'm useless all around the house. 
Um, but I'll take the other as a quality game. Yeah, don't buy a PlayStation Classic to mod it. If you've got one and you fancy trying out a few games that do work, then, then do that. But um, yeah, it's just not worth it. So the reason I made this video really is because there's lots of videos going around going, oh, the PlayStation Classic uh, is a piece of shit, but you've got to mod it and then it's great. Um, I'm here to tell you that if you're using it just to play PlayStation games, that isn't the case. I've got no idea what it's like emulating other consoles because well, it's a PlayStation, so I'd like to keep, keep it PlayStation only, but you can't. So you get the horrible front end, the free emulators greeing you, you get annoying options to manipulate. I mean, it's not that simple. They've just basically dumped uh, Retro Arc on here. You see, this is much, much smoother here. There's no frame skipping. It seems to be all synced up. Yeah, the PAL version of this game sucks on this device. This one's good until it crashes. So there we go. I don't know why I keep getting weird frame skips in, this, in these videos. That's very strange. It didn't happen when I recorded it, like when I was playing it live. But on, on the re... Uh, well, in the editing, somewhere, the video is skipped. Skipped beat. Uh, but this is a cool game. Cool if a little bit ugly. Uh, do like me some out time, don't I? So that's the PlayStation Classic, more or less, slated uh, in total totality. Uh, if anybody tells you it's worth getting one to emulate old consoles, it isn't. A Raspberry Pi 3B, which can do everything that this does, but better, is probably the same price as a PlayStation Classic. Um, even a second-hand one you can probably get the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 be cheaper. And you'll have similar fun setting it up. It's as complicated, I'm not going to lie, but at least the games work properly on that as far as I... in my experience. So I do have a Raspberry Pi 3B and I have all these games on it and uh, I don't think I've had one of them crash and I don't get any sync problems. The uh... Anyway, uh, so that's my video. That's my video about the PlayStation Classic. Just don't bother we doing here? Mm, we're going back into the menu. Random. Okay. Uh, let's try the... Um, so what I do have on here is I have the... the uh, arcade party pack. Yeah, let's try that. Because uh, this does some horrific things in the emulation. Uh, no, we're going to game manager. Don't know. Oh, you can delete games off of the USB stick here. Don't do that. Uh, that's irritating. Uh, it takes a little time to work itself out. We're gonna should we play Smash TV and show you how awful that is before we before we get on with our lives and forget the PlayStation Classic ever existed. Let's have a look. Uh, Digital Eclipse. Uh, were always shit back in the day. They've changed their um, they've changed it up. They used to put filters and everything, and it was freaking horrible. Their logo's horrible as well, but they chose that. So they thought it represented their skill set. What are we doing here? I don't want to play too bin. Oh, we got videos on here. Hey, we got a beardy white man. Yeah. Looks familiar. Uh, right, let's go to uh, Smash TV and show you some of the niceness that happens with these emulated games. Look at that menu. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, can't turn the filtering off in the menu. Uh, I can make it. Yeah. This disc is actually quite uh, crappy anyway, on the even on the original PlayStation hardware. This is a 50 hertz game. Um, look at that junk at the top of the screen there, and that gets worse. So this is a 50 hertz game, and it's uh, it runs jerkily on a normal PlayStation. 
but on this classic console under emulation, uh, we get the bottom of the screen cut off and the top of the screen flashes. So, Bingo! I don't know. You tell me. You tell me if you like that or not. Look how jerkily this guy runs around. Yeah, this wasn't a good conversion or emulation, really, was it? Even back in the day. The game still plays okay. It's all a bit frame skippy and visually broken. So what more could you ask for? Yeah. What we're trying to do here, we're gonna try and like there's there are settings in RetroArch where you can like crop the top and bottom of the image off. But let's uh let's change the filtering and see why see if that helps. It doesn't help. Yeah, it actually makes it worse. It makes a bigger area of the top of the screen look screwed. Beautiful. It's David Letterman. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, horrible. Waste of time! The PlayStation Classic is a complete waste of time. Unless you want to emulate something on it which works properly, like it might run Mega Drive games better because the Mega Drive is a lot less complicated. I've got no idea. But why would you want to play Mega Drive games on your PlayStation Classic? I don't know. Um, so unless you want to run something like that and it runs them perfectly, I would say it's a waste of plastic, uh, waste of microchips, a waste of Sony's time, waste of cardboard for trees, and it's a waste of YouTube bandwidth. Is that slated enough? I think so. Right, what else have we got in this video? Oh, I can see there's a little bit left. I might be... Uh... So, you know, that's Smash TV. What we're going to do is we're going to go and look at the 50 Hertz version of Ridge Racer uh, that came with Type 4. So when you bought Ridge Racer Type 4, they gave you an extra disc which had the original Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer on it, uh, time trial mode, and they'd made it so it was like 50 frames a second and high res. So it's called Red Racer Turbo on here. Uh, it's what happens when you rip the disc, it calls it Red Racer Turbo for some reason. Don't know. Uh, again, I can't do this, so I'm not going to get any extra cards. Um, so this was supposed to be like a technical tour de force on the PlayStation. Here it is running on the PlayStation Classic. Beautiful. Right. We'll use turbo mode, thank you. And we'll just start with the standard car. And I don't know if you notice, but it was jerky. Uh, but this game has another horrific feature, which is it completely slows down and then speeds right up and then slows down again and then speeds right up and then slows right down and then speeds right up and then slows down I still managed to navigate the corner and yeah it's just completely inconsistent game speed and frame rate so there we go PlayStation Classic stinks. Stinks to high heaven. No, um, no, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it when it was originally released. Because I could play Ridge Racer Type 4, I could play Tekken 3, which I hadn't really played before. There's a few games in there which were cool, Super Puzzle Fighter. But, you know, it wasn't worth the money, but it wasn't entirely horrific. Adding your own games doesn't make it that much better because they don't work properly. So, if the emulation is uh, been bad recently, since I um, chipped my chipped my PlayStation Mini Classic, whatever you want to call it, if they've improved the emulation and then the games work rock solidly, it might be worth it. But on this showing, don't bother. All right, then. See you later.